Alien Party Gamers, welcome to our new YouTube and Twitch studio. This is going to be sort of a build log and pseudo guide to how we built this backyard studio at the San Diego LAN HQ. It's not going to be as in-depth as you might find in some build logs that are on YouTube, and I felt that there were enough of those, in fact we used a lot of them, in order to build and do all of the things that were required to get this up and running. On this episode, I'm going to show you the finished product, and then I'm gonna let you decide whether if you wanna watch the build log. If you're interested in seeing a more in-depth build log, please let us know in the comments, and I'll go ahead and make one that has more information. For right now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to show you the highlight reels of how it was built and a little bit of the in progress. Right now it's complete. I might wanna do a little bit more sound dampening as there's still a little bit of echo in here, but as you'll see, I put up uh, 48 sound panels that have uh, ridges on them, so it really does help get rid of a lot of the acoustic noise that's produced by equipment and the voices in the room. Also, the carpeting helped out a lot. So we're going to be putting up probably some posters or sound dampening material, something to sort of get this white space a little bit more decorative. The whole thing started off because we were doing our screen lookers channel in the living room and there's a lot of white noise in the living room, a lot of fan noise, a lot of people that have to go in there, obviously roommates and whatnot, that have to make uh, dinner at the same time that we do our screen lookers thing. And it wasn't, it just wasn't convenient enough to keep doing that. And we've been doing it for almost two years that way. And it was working out, but I wanted to do something a little bit more professional. So at around the same time that we moved the screen lookers content onto its own channel and took it off of this one, I decided, hey, let's go ahead and just keep going with this momentum and we'll just build this YouTube studio. So that's what we did. I financed all the parts through Lowe's and the building codes here in San Diego and, and I believe the state allow you to build an outhouse or building uh, in your own property as long as it's under a certain dimension. So that's what we did. We did just exactly that and we did a little bit of tweaking in order to allow us to have some lighting and, and plugs within the same vicinity. Speaking of wiring, in, in the shed, we have a full 40 amps of power running between the pool equipment in the backyard and the shed. That way, they both have enough and we can use whatever we need to. We have a dedicated plug going straight into the side of the shed, and that breaks off into several others that we can use for things like charging camera batteries, phone batteries, plugging in televisions or monitors, running builds that we do out here, and the lighting and equipment. For sound in this room, right now I'm using a Rode wireless microphone on my lapel, but we do have the USB microphones that were shown in our Creative Labs thank you video that we did for the 200th Screen Lookers episode. And those are actually USB microphones plugged in below the Screen Lookers couch here in the studio and then ran through the wall and plugged into the back of the computer that we're using for streaming, which is also our test bench. I went ahead and did as much through the wall as I could because I didn't wanna have the wires running around the ground here in the studio. This is what this is built for. This space is specifically meant to do what we're doing today. So I decided to have in-wall ethernet, in-wall USB, in-wall power, mounted, uh, spotlighting for the scenes. So th that's everything that we have is integrated into the studio so that I don't have to set up space for uh, microphones, lighting, backdrops, like we did when we were filming in the living room in the kitchen. So being able to just come out at any point in time and say, hey, I've got an idea for a video. Hey, let's grab this part and this part and this part and throw a computer together and see how well it works and film it. That is something that really interested me and that's why I wanted to spend the time on making this small studio. It's just big enough to house what I'm doing in here. We've got two main sets. The one you're looking at here is something I wanted to do for unboxings, how-tos, build logs, etc. And if you're following this channel you'll see that this is the exact space that I used at the end of the last video we did which was the MX500. 
I use the same space for the Ryzen 1700 build as well as the under $500 gaming rig so far. And the space has been great. I've been able to come out here with all the parts, unbox everything, build, and be able to show you things much quicker than having to set up and tear down our set every time. The infrastructure for the building is a standard 16 inch on center with uh, fiberglass insulation between each piece of two by four. And the drywall on the walls is soundproof. And what that means is it's the same width. It's a half inch drywall, but it's twice as dense as the stuff in the ceiling, making it very heavy. And when I shut the door on the front of the building, you can't hear anything from outside and vice versa. So there's no unwanted interruptions, no construction noise from the neighbors, nobody turning on the washing machine in the kitchen and causing us to having to redo a set. So having the soundproofing was definitely worth the investment. On top of that, we have a little bit of space in here for guests. If we have overnight guests for land parties or if we want to do an interview and they're traveling and they need a place to crash, we went ahead and got in a futon for the screen lookers couch, which has a nice simple ratcheting device that goes back and forth. I actually picked this up on our way to Ikea. We found one in the same vicinity of the same couch we wanted for $40 cheaper than Ikea was selling it at practically brand new. So we went ahead and snagged it and it was definitely worthwhile. It's, it's not the most comfortable couch by any means, but for $60, definitely uh, would buy again. The end tables on either side of the couch was actually made out of scrap wood from the build itself, and I was able to make them perfectly to the, to the dimensions that would fit between the wall and the couch. So I'm happy that that worked out. And then finally, I was able to bolt the uh, lamp style holders for the microphones for the screen lookers straight to it. So there's no more fidgeting with the microphones before every shoot. They're there, they're permanent, and they'll stay there for as long as we need them to be. I also went ahead and put our 360 controllers on the walls for the screen lookers content. So they also attach to the same USB hub that's underneath the couch so that there is no more unplugging and fidgeting with wires before every shoot. They're there permanently. We can unhook them obviously, it's just USB, but it is nice to just grab them and, and start the show. Our monitor for the screen lookers as well as for some of our builds and things in here is a 40 inch plasma Samsung TV that we're using that I did in wall HDMI up from a panel to another panel that's hidden behind the TV. And that is really helpful. We put an articulating mount on there that allows us to go from the configuration you see it here next to me to 90 degrees and facing the couch. One small problem was that it was advertised as a 20 inch arm, but when you measure it out, it's actually only about 16 and a half inches from where the bracket starts to where the bend in the TV is. So the arm length itself was underestimated by how the advertising was. We went ahead and put a complaint about that in the description of the item on the Amazon page. And uh, what we did to sort of be able to bring the TV out a little bit more than that was put a two by four, uh, painted it the same color as the wall, right between the bracket and the wall to add another inch and a half to that. So we can very nearly get the TV uh, 90, 90 degrees from the wall perpendicular so that it's, it's pretty much fine for what we're gonna be doing uh, with the screen lookers content to have a TV facing the couch at any time. So again, no setup required. I just pull it out from the TV. If I need to switch inputs, I do it right then and there, and that's not a problem. For storage in the, in the unit here, we have a couple of bookshelves here that are table height. One that I'm using as a tabletop to hold the test bench on, as well as any equipment I might be building that day. I also have another of the same unit holding all of the tools and accessories that I might need at arm's length. Things like extension cables, screwdrivers, our toolkit, etc. The tabletop that I'm resting on now is something I built out of the scrap from building the shed. The legs are an extra piece of wood that Lowe's gave us because the original piece, this piece here, was actually cracked on one end and it was actually the roof ridge for the entire unit and that had to be one of the strongest pieces of wood. So they, they shipped us out another piece for free. They gave us this piece because obviously they couldn't resell it. I went ahead and used it for the legs and it's very, very, very sturdy. I actually have this table leaning towards the camera about an inch so that the back, the end that's towards me 
is a little higher in order to give you guys a little bit better of a product view. On the bottom of the table, we have another shelf that I put some extra stuff like laptops that I use for notes. I also have my extra keyboard and mouse down there or any offhand storage I need on the fly. It's also where I keep the router and Wi-Fi access point for the room. Ethernet is something else that comes into the building. It is directly from the main switch in our server room in the house. It goes through the server room, out of the house, into a series of tubes, down into the ground, through conduit, back up out on the other side of the shed, and straight into the wall of the shed here. And then it goes into a female keystone jack that I have this router and access point plugged into here in the shed. So we have full gigabit connection. We've been streaming from here. We did our Overwatch stream. Uh, our livecaster, Joe, you remember him from previous Screen Lookers episodes and our previous live streams actually was in here doing the live casting using our test bench as a live casting device and everything worked out great. That was before we had the sound uh, panels put in so it was a little echoey, but as far as the stream goes, I'm very happy with how everything worked out in here. We didn't have to have anybody finding a computer to stream from. We didn't have to find a place for them to be that wasn't noisy. They just come out here, shut the door, match starts, bam, easy as it goes. We also went ahead and put in some other things if we have guests overnight. We've got a uh, microwave and a mini fridge in here just in case people need to stay long term. Let's say a family member comes in from out of town or something of that nature. So we just had these extra a mini fridge and a microwave from a uh, an office that we were renting out a long time ago and that is no no longer the case so i just had these lying around went ahead and threw them in here too the microwave makes for a good timer for screen lookers episodes as we try to cut them around 15 minutes and i don't have to worry about oh i gotta find my phone or whatever it's right here next to us and we just hit 15 minutes and start on the outside of the shed we went ahead and did your regular shingles my roommate did a uh, roofing job back in the day and so his experience with that was allowed us to stay on the uh, cheaper side we were able to just do it ourselves uh, it took about half a day we were able to shingle the entire roof as well as i put up a tv antenna funny enough my dad gave us a tv antenna when we cut our cable service when my parents moved to their new home and i bought this one from them the Antenna is supposed to be self-articulating. It has a motor built into it, but funny enough, the motorized portion, the portion that you control from inside of your house, doesn't allow you to plug into a standard US jack. Both sides of the plug have the wide part of it, so you can't physically fit it in there. So what I've done is I just have it pointed out into the most open part of our yard, which overlooks a valley, and that's giving us pretty good HD signal over the air. It still blows my mind that you can get 1080p over the air when for many, many years it was, it was static and, and crap. So not that we watch a whole lot of over the air TV, but you know, somebody staying out here and they just, I don't know, they want to watch the local news. Bam, they, they turn on whatever channel that they can get over the air. Obviously they could always get Netflix or what have you on this Samsung TV. No problem. I really hope that um, you guys enjoy uh, watching the, the build log for this shed. And I hope that uh, we went over just about everything that I think was important about a YouTube studio here. The, the idea that ha it will be quick to produce content, will be easy to produce content, especially when you don't have to take down and put up set equipment, lighting and, and sound equipment will really help us produce content quicker, more effectively and more professionally for the years to come. And I hope that you guys come along with us for the ride. This should be a very interesting experiment. And um, with the things that we're doing here for not only the YouTube channel, but the land parties, being able to show them off live stream them and have professionally made content that's going to allow you to feel like you're actually at our events is a big deal to me. And I wanna take you on that ride as well. So please come with us, subscribe to our channel and I will definitely do my best to give you quality content. If there are anything that you wanna see on our channel, something that we can showcase here, anything that if you're a local and you wanna come by and you wanna show off your custom build here or something that you wanna help 
build here, like if you have a computer system and you wanna learn how to build it, feel free to message us. Be happy to take you through the steps, record it, show it off live, and see what happens. You can always find us on all of the social media, uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, at San Diego LAN. And if you're ever wondering about events that we're having coming up or you want to be more notified about things that we're doing in the area, visit us at sandiegolan.net. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.